Hello my fellow Hammerheads and welcome to the ninth short story of the Broken Realm series. Before we begin, I recommend that you subscribe to the Games Workshop community newsletter, because this way you can enjoy these stories two days before they are being released officially on the website. Now, I won't waste any more of your time, let's begin. Dark Offerings Read by Beard Almighty Four slinking figures approached the throne of shadow and bowed deeply. Even as they made a show of obeisance to the lord of this cursed chamber, their eyes flicked towards one another, narrowing with hatred and suspicion. Your lord fangs were bared, and hackles rose. These were death masters of the clan's ashen, masters of all murder, misdirection and mayhem. There was no being in the realms they trusted less than one of their own kind. But when the shadow spoke, their enmity was temporarily suppressed, replaced with fearful trepidation. You are here because I have need for a swift and silent play, said the being on the throne. A killer that can breach any fortress. No matter the arcane wards or unsleeping sentinels that protect it. Its voice was the sound of swords scraping upon bone. A promise of death and torment that echoed terribly in the mind. So thick were the shadows obscuring the speaker that the scaven could see only the vague outline of its hulking, winged body. In the center of that black mass, were two terrible eyes, twin shards of ice, pitiless and ancient. Present your offerings, it said, with a wave of a clawed hand that could tear off any of their skulls with a single, wrenching motion. Prove your skill, for the woman that most impresses me, the rewards shall be more than you can imagine. Mikurik of Clan Stabstrick came forward first, clutching a sack of white cloth stained red with blood. His hair had been all but burned away long ago by a dwarden flamespitter, giving him the look of some oversized broodling. As he approached the throne, Mikurik winced and scratched at his skinny ribs. Being so near to the Shadow Lord, seemed to have entirely turned his stomach. Great master! No trophy is better greater than mine! The stabstrick deathmaster hissed, upending his sack. Out tumbled three severed heads. Each was noble and beautiful of aspect. Each face serene despite the ragged red stump of the neck beneath. The Light Lords of Loon, said Mikurik. These pointy ear brothers thought they were safe hidden in their palace of prisms. But nowhere is safe from Clan Stabstrike. Mikurik climbed their blinding walls, slipped swift quick into their meditation chambers and cut their throats before they even opened their eyes. The creature to Mikurik's left snorted. This red beast was old and grizzled, and atop its snout was strapped a pair of oversized brass-looking goggles. Dead elf things, he scoffed. Boring. Death Master Kerr has killed a thousand in his time. Any blind whelp could bring the Shadow Lord such a gift. My mind is greater by far. With a flourish, Kerr revealed from his robes a glittering set of heavy keys. One bronze, one silver, and the largest rod of pure gold. Its notches shaped to resemble the teeth of a fire drake. The forge keys of Drasma, snickered Deathmaster Kerr. 
Kerr killed the priests and took them for himself. Without their foolish priests to tend it, the hearth of the great magma hold was soon snuffed out. And now the beardlings cover shiver in their hole. Kerr's laughter turned to a hacking rasp and was soon cut off by the third Skaven figure, who elbowed his rival aside. Patry gifts, he said, waving a dismissive claw. Nothing compared to what Narsport has brought here, for he is the greatest death master of all. Narsport snapped his claws, and two ragged rattlings came scuttling from the darkness, carrying between them what appeared to be a tall, ornate mirror, its surface glowing with a soft cerulean light. The room grew ice cold, and rime frost crackled across the floor. Nasbot has traveled to the mirrored city, he said, his trembling voice nonetheless filled with smug bravado. He has returned with fur intact. He brings you this, mighty one, as proof certain that he is best. The being on the throne leaned forward. Looking closer, one could see that the mirror did not reflect the darkness of this chamber, but instead showed a ghostly city of impossible dimensions. A metropolis of splintered glass and looming, crooked spires. There were figures within, ghostly beings with anguished faces that pressed their fleshless hands against the glass. Impressive, the being muttered. The necromancer's cursed prison is not easily breached unless easily escaped. Nosbot half grinned, half winced, staring down at his scarred paw. He saw a purplish discoloration spreading painfully along his forelimb. And what of you, Crexit of Clan Nictis? said the Shadow Lord. What trophy do you bring me? All eyes fell upon the last of the Death Masters, who crouched some distance from his kin, using his tail knife to sharpen his foreclaws. Crixit brings no gift, Crixit said. Ha! barked Mikirik with an accompanying acidic belch. Pathetic fool! sneered Norspot, clawing furiously at his itching arm. Deathmaster Kerb bared his teeth contemptuously and hacked up a slimy wet of fur. Seated on its throne, the hidden master's glowing eyes narrowed to angry slits. The shadows writhed and shifted, like animals taking flight in expectation of imminent violence. Each of the Deathmasters took a discreet step backwards, eagerly anticipating their peer's gruesome death. It's not wise to waste my time, the Shadow Lord growled. Deathmaster Crixit spread his arms wide and bowed deeply. Mighty powerful one, Crixit needs no trophy to prove his skill. It will be obvious any moment now, when he slays these scapfried fools. There was a chorus of hissing and cursing from the other Deathmasters, who were suddenly brandishing a bewildering array of shurikens, daggers, punch blades and assorted murderous implements. Crixit gazed at them, his expression more curious than afraid. Any moment, he repeated. Let us peel the fur from this nectar's wretch, snarled Kerr. The throned master waved a hand to signal its accord, and the three assassins burst into motion, leaping at their prey in a blur of blades and snapping fangs. Kerr's toxin-dripping dagger was no more than the width of a boil fly wings from Crixit's speedy eyeball when his motion ceased entirely, his muscles locking rigid. The stricken Skaven's eyes flicked across to Mikarik, who was frozen in the act of hurling a clawful of shuriken, his hairless body trembling, blood 
streaming from his snout and his fearful eyes. Northbot was somehow staggering on, despite obviously suffering the same gruesome affliction. Still clutching his twin short swords, yet convulsing so fiercely that Kerr heard the familiar sound of bones splintering. Kerr himself began to shake uncontrollably, wracked by waves of indescribable agony that twisted his skeleton and turned his muscles inside out. His spine bent backwards and he felt the horrifying sensation of his ribs forcing their way out through his narrow chest. Now, said Crixit with a satisfied nod. The three Death Masters exploded in a shower of gore and shattered bone. Crixit was right in the midst of the deluge of viscera, and he emerged squinting through a splatter of scaven flesh that covered him from snout to hind claw. He wiped the back of a paw across his eyes and bent to retrieve a pair of brass goggles with smashed lenses. All that remained of the unfortunate Deathmaster Kerr. Es kann levit spor, said Crixit, by way of explanation. All it takes is a single sniff sniff and a bruise inside your belly until it bursts. Crixit poisoned them days ago, but timing can be imprecise. Here is proof that Crixit is the deadliest master murderer of all. He held out the bloody pair of looking glasses. The figure on the throne was silent for a long moment. Then Crixit saw the glint of oversized fangs, bared in a cruel smile. You will do, Worman, the hidden being said. You will do very well. What is the kill contract, O oh Master? said Crixit. To destroy the impossible, said the winged monstrosity, rising from its shadowy throne. And in doing so, to bring about the end of the eternal. That was Dark Offerings, read by Beard Almighty.